Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today we're going to be focusing on something that is a little bit of a departure from the normal content that I post on this channel. But it's something that I poured a lot of time into and really struggled to find info on, so I thought that I would compile this video for anyone who needs it. I know there are a lot of other smaller content creators like myself who have also been looking into this, and so I hope it is beneficial for you and that you will be putting videos out at the impossibly high standard of quality that we all hold ourselves to. Or at least, that I do. So right off the bat, uh, this video is probably going to be a lot to digest and likely very lengthy, so I will be splitting it up into sections with timestamps in the description so that you can easily navigate to whichever part you need. I've also chosen to split the video into two bigger parts. This first part will detail everything you can do with just hardware and software optimization, and the second part will deal with using third-party software to further enhance our quality. The aim of all of this is to provide you with the tools and information to squeeze the highest achievable quality out of a 7 year old software made to capture DS and Game Boy games on a 15 year old console. All websites and products I used will be linked in the description as well. P.S. Uh, just before we start, I wanted to add that all of my testing and the information I gathered from others were done through a PC. So I'm not sure how any of this applies to Mac or iOS. I imagine it's generally similar, but some of the specifics could vary. Thanks and enjoy. Okay, so I ordered my DS from Loopy on the 3DS Capture website. Uh, I received a DS with an installed capture card, as you can see by the little micro USB port there on the back. Let me just focus that real quick. There you go. Um, as well as it also came with this micro USB cord. Depending on where you order from, the situation might look a little bit different. But as far as I'm aware, this is basically all you need. You'll also need to make sure to download the drivers and the software from the DS Capture page on the website. Now, before we get into actually plugging the DS in, I want to provide you guys with some brief, emphasis on brief, background knowledge on the different ports you can use and how they will affect your output quality. We're going to start with USB 2.0 because it's 2020 and if your computer has any 1.0 ports then you should probably just buy a new computer. <laughs> so let's talk some numbers. USB 2.0 has a data transfer rate of 480 megabits per second. It was released in the year 2000 and today it is probably the most common type of USB port you will see. It can be identified by its black interior. In the year 2008, USB 3.0 emerges with a data transfer rate of 5 gigabits per second, which is almost 10 times faster than 2.0. Assuming most of you are using a PC you've built slash bought in the last, what, 10 years? You probably have at least one of these ports. My laptop people might need to have hardware a bit more recent. These ports present with a blue interior. Before we get into 3.1, I want to add that up to this point, the color of the port has been a generally reliable guideline, and if possible, you should consult your manual about which ports are which, mainly because that kinda goes out the window now. Anyway, there are two generations of USB 3.1. Guess what they're called? You got it. Gen 1, Gen 2. It turns out that a few years ago, the USB 3.0 spec was absorbed by the 3.1 Gen 1 spec meaning 3.0 and 3.1 Gen 1 are the same thing and both have a data transfer rate of 5 gigabits per second. 3.1 Gen 2, however, offers a data transfer rate of 10 gigabits per second. Now, both of my 3.1 Gen 1 and Gen 2 ports are red, but a red USB port simply means that they are something called sleep and charge ports. These ports can also be yellow, and 3.1 ports can also be blue. The point is that you should just check the manual. 3.1 ports, namely Gen 2, are on the newer side still, so unless you've recently bought a more expensive motherboard, it's unlikely, in my humble opinion, that you will have one. I have no idea what the situation is like for laptops, but I'm gonna settle for highly unlikely that you will have one. So how does this affect output quality? A quick preview of 2.0 and 3.0 side by side should explain. As you can see, the 3.0 port offers a much smoother experience. I'm not sure if this is running at 60 FPS, but it is certainly a hell of a lot closer than the 2.0 port. If the clarity of your display isn't quite where you want it yet, don't worry, we will address that a bit later in the video. 
Next, we can take a look at 3.0 and 3.1 Gen 2. This part of my testing left me a little bit confused uh, as the frame rate seems to take a step back despite the faster speed. I suggest you try out all your ports and use the one that works best for you. Now, I want to take some time to go over the minutia around my trials and tribulations here. I also want to quickly add that unless I say otherwise, all of the video you've seen slash are about to see of the DS's were tested with the new store-bought micro USB cords. Uh, I don't have any traditional 3.0 ports on my motherboard, so I'm not sure if the performance between 3.1 Gen 1 and 3.0 varies at all. I do have a 3.0 port on the front of my case, but I found that plugging the cards directly into the MOBO provide the best results. That being said, the 3.0 front ports seem to display a bit nicer quality than the 2.0 back ports. I also have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port on the back of my motherboard. I bought a hub that I have plugged into it, but it only has 3.0 ports on it. These 3.0 ports seem to produce slightly smoother quality than the ports on the front panel of my case. I tried using a Type-C to Type-A adapter plugged into the 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port. Marginal quality difference. I haven't been able to find a hub with 3.1 Gen 2 ports on it, so I'm not sure how that would look, but if I had to guess, I would say probably about the same as the hub I'm currently using. I haven't tried a 3.0 hub plugged in via 3.1 Gen 1 either, so if you try that, let me know how it works in the comments. In my research, I found that a lot of people are having trouble with screens in the software flashing white accompanied by FPS drops. There are a multitude of potential solutions for you, but unfortunately, no concrete answer as to how exactly to stop this. Firstly, I've heard that some people found buying better quality micro USB cords to be helpful. This will unlikely fix the problem, but I went ahead and bought two new cords anyway. For me, it didn't fix anything, but it seemed to display slightly smoother video. Another option could be to update your USB drivers. Uh, this is actually pretty simple, just google it, take you like 5 minutes. I've also heard that white flashing is caused by a USB driver bug in AMD specific hardware. Uh, I'm personally running on Ryzen myself, so I can't say so for sure, but I think that this is unlikely to be related. Some have said that because the software is old, it simply doesn't get along with Windows 10. I've tried running the programs in compatibility mode for Windows 7, 8, XP, and Vista, and personally haven't found it to be particularly helpful. Something else you could try is changing the priority of the program. I personally found this didn't help me, and more often than not actually just froze the software, so that I had to turn it off and relaunch it, which removed the changes I just made to the priority. If your cap cards are plugged into a USB hub, try plugging them directly into your motherboard. To build off that last one, I actually reached out to a fellow shiny hunter named Sabian to ask him about his experiences with this, because if you've ever watched his channel, he runs 4 cards at the same time, all above 30 FPS. He told me that he also experiences white flashing from time to time, and a solution that has worked for him is simply moving the cards around and plugging them into different ports. In my experience this actually has helped, but for whatever reason I only get white flashing when both my cards are plugged in through 3.1 Gen 1. This perfectly sashays to my next point. When I was speaking to Sabian, he also told me that how powerful your computer is could potentially affect the white flashing. This personally never really occurred to me, but it's worth looking into. I am running a GTX 1660, an R5 2600X, 16GB of RAM, and a B450 MSI board. He is running a R9 3900X, an RTX 2070, and 32 gigs of RAM. His build is properly better than mine, and he seems to have a better experience, even when he's got double the cards I do plugged in. So this could very well be an integral part of the solution. So my understanding is that the DS Capture software is CPU intensive, so having a better CPU could potentially lead to better experiences with the software. Again, I don't have concrete proof of that, but it's something worth thinking about. 
In the forums, I've seen people say that having OBS open has made the issue stop, but I've also heard that it causes it to start in some cases. For me, it certainly does still happen when OBS is open, uh, but some have suggested keeping a few Google tabs open, all playing several hour-long videos, for some reason, seems to fix the problem. Jury is still out on that one. Lastly, I was perusing the forums some time ago on Loopy's website, and I did see somewhere that he acknowledged this is a bug in the coding for the DS capture software that wasn't present in the 3DS capture software, even though they are allegedly very similarly built. I included this because this is very likely the reason for the white flashing, but the main issue is that I was unable to locate the post in which he said that when I went back to find it for the making of this video, so just take it with a grain of salt. Okay guys, that's gonna pretty much do it for the first part of this video. Um, this video was like a long time overdue. I actually started working on it last summer. Then I got kind of burnt out on it and I kind of just put it on the back burner for a while. And more recently I've decided that I wanted to do my best to um, finish putting this out there because I think there was a lot of really helpful information in it. Uh, I've also elected to put these out in separate pieces just because it was so much work to per put just this first subsection together and I was like you know what let me just put this out on its own and then I'll do my best to continue working on the extra parts just to give you some insight we are now done subsection 1 or part 1.1 which is video and next section is 1.2 which will be audio and then the third subsection, 1.3, will be software. After that, there is a part two for OBS, you know, like post stuff with like video editing. Um, I'm not very much of a master with OBS, nor am I very good with Premiere or video editing. So beyond that point, it will be very brief and I'm still not sure how I'm gonna handle all that, um, but yeah, so I just thought I'd kind of let you guys know what's going on. And uh, also, again, a lot of this information that I gathered throughout the video is research that I've personally put in. And so if you find that some your experiences have been different or there is other solutions that you may be privy to, I welcome you to drop a comment and, you know, we can figure out this puzzle of a situation together. Um, you know, I'm not saying by any means the information I have in this video is proof of anything or solid or based in like fact it's just based in my personal experience and what i've been able to find in my research so yeah with that i'll leave the video off and then uh, hopefully i'll see you again relatively soon for the next parts thanks for watching i hope this was helpful